There was a history of textile production in the South. It was a mission of Biltmore Industries to make very fine quality goods. That really transformed what was being made in this area. Edith Vanderbilt was very devoted to Biltmore State Industries. Between 1907 and 1909, the orders grew by 400%. She was literally up in a little surrey with a fringe on top, delivering a lot of these items. In 1917, Fred Seeley purchased Biltmore Estate Industries from Edith Vanderbilt. He built the buildings here next door to Grove Park Inn. They did direct sales to guests and tourists who came to Asheville, but they also did a mail order business. Fred Seeley was a master advertiser. He made sure all the famous and rich people that came to Grove Park Inn left here with some cloth. He dressed people like Henry Ford, Thomas Edison, President Wilson, anybody famous, he tried to make sure they were wearing this product. 1929 was probably their biggest year. They had about 100 employees here. Everything was done by hand, and it took hours and hours to get a yard of cloth made. It was all about craftsmanship. They wouldn't let a piece of cloth go out unless it was perfect. Fred Seeley owned this property from 1917 until his death in 1942, and then his son, Fred Jr., sold it to Harry Blomberg. I inherited the ownership from my father, who bought the Biltmore Industries in uh, 1953, and then he started regenerating homespun on a much smaller level than it had been. Originally, it had been, they were making 950 yards a day, of course, that what wasn't gonna happen again. So I think we were the only people in the United States, there might have been one other place in Massachusetts who was doing fleece to finish product. It was a very thriving business at that time. You would see the machines and you would see the, the wool from the back of the sheep and there would be this huge room full of wool and it would be washed and then they would dye it in these huge vats and then they'd put it in the carding machine and that would go through and then they would spin it and the mule spinners and then it had to be threaded into something called a heddle. Very intricate threading to get the colors of all the materials and they were vast, there were so many colors. And then it would be woven and then they would wash it for eight hours in ivory snow in the big vats. Then they would stretch it out on the uh, racks and dry it in the sun. It was an amazing process. The material was beautiful, beautiful material. Some of it was very soft and thin, some of it was the heavy tweeds, and everyone just loved it. It was just a magnificent, it was very, very thrilling as a young person to be a part of it. In the past, when I thought about textiles of this region, I really just thought about traditional types of weaving and um, quilting and things like that. But now I'm really starting to see designers. What they're doing at Oreo Mill is so unique and it's such a struggle because it's up against the big, big industry of textiles. But they are creating their own path and they're doing something unique. When someone purchases an item that's made by hand, it offers them a connection to that artist who created the piece. Plus it gives them a bit of history of this country, a bit of what's going on with um, our nation trying to focus on Made in America. It gives them a story to tell. Oftentimes it, it gives them an heirloom to pass on in their family.